Hey folks, Mac T back, and we have another oil video, but this time it is on a used sample, a couple used samples of the Castrol Edge. Yes, the 5W20 synthetic, and it was used in an Edge, and that Edge was a Ford 3.7 liter Ford Sport. That's right, the powerful beast that it is. So we're going to go ahead and go review these oil tests for the mileages that were put on it and see how this Castrol Edge did in the entire scheme of the oil testing. So the first thing we got, we got that Ford Edge 3.5 or 3.7 V6 Duratec and we went uh, with the Castrol Synthetic 5W20 and this last test he had 4,791 miles on it. You can get this Castrol Edge in five quart jugs for $27.47, but the prices do change. But approximately $5.49 a quart when you buy in bulk like that. Now the oil report from Blackstone Labs said that it looked better now that he did the first oil report. Basically, this is a subsequent uh, oil change. This uh, Edge Sport does not have more than, say, about 40,000 miles on it after the second oil change. So it is sort of in a break-in mode in a little bit. But overall, the oil report was even better than the last report, so that's always good. Now moving in there, we see we have two oil reports for the Castrol Edge because this uh, oil testing was done for the same oil twice. So that's a bonus for us and we have this set up. We have from the left to the right, we have the 4791 mileage on that test. Then we have a 4553 and then we have the virgin oil analysis of the actual unused Castrol Edge oil. Starting out with aluminum uh, from left to right, we had three parts, three parts per million for the last oil change with 4791 on it. And then this, we had four parts per million on the uh, first one that was documented with universal average being four. So he's right there in the money, just sitting there and having a great time. They have chromium. We have zero chromium in this oil. So that's always a good thing. Don't want that because you start seeing that, then you start seeing other things going wrong. Iron, the iron was definitely below the universal limits uh, from four to five on the oil changes that he did with uh, one part per million was documented in the actual virgin sample. Uh, copper, copper was definitely below on the uh, universal scale too. First oil change he had 16 parts per million and then the second one which is the most recent was 11 parts per million. Lead, we had zero lead across the board with universal averages being one. Tin was zero across the board for everything so no worry about tin. Now we go into the um, molybdenum. That's right, Molly B. We got uh, on the first oil change, we had 70 parts per million. And the second one that we just most recently got was 65 parts per million with 81 being the virgin oil sample. So it started out with 81 and then during the use, it used a little bit of that up in the process. So that's what it's meant to do. This Molly B will be used up. And uh, 70 parts per million is universal average for most virgin oil samples. Nickel, we have zero nickel across the board, even universal numbers. Manganese, we had two parts per million consistently in both oil samples, but there is zero manganese in the virgin oil sample with eight parts per million universally throughout the uh, testing of virgin oil samples. Silver, we had zero silver across the board for our parts per million, which is a good thing. Titanium, well, the thing is we got some titanium in this oil, but the VOA sample for the actual Castrol Edge is zero. And then he's popping up for the first oil change that he did with Castrol, seven. And then the subsequent one was 20. So uh, who knows, maybe we had a bit of a change here in the oils that we're using since this testing back in uh, January 2018. Maybe Castrol Edge has added some uh, titanium to their oil, but the universal averages are too. That's rather surprising to see titanium popping up when there's none in it. So maybe this is an additive. You know, keep in mind, folks, um, as things go, oil companies change their uh, formulations and everything else throughout the year. So there's no telling a lot of times what's going to be in it from one from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. 
as they change. Potassium, we're moving on to potassium. We had one part per million potassium in the, the virgin's uh, sample with three parts per million showing up in the uh, castrol edge first sample use sample and zero in the subsequent one. So that's a little strange on its own, but universally it's only two. Uh, boron, we had uh, 72 parts per million boron in the virgin oil sample and here's another fine example of what happens when they change what they're doing with their oils. Again, I think Castrol Edge has changed the formulations for the oils and uh, the first oil sample that was a used sample is 136 with a 203 in the second subsequent sample with the universal average being 45. Silicon, we don't want much silicon in there, although companies do use silicon in there. Uh, just keep in mind we don't want to have too much in there. It's an anti-foaming agent, all that good stuff. But there's four parts really in the original sample, and then we have 11 and 9 in the subsequent use samples. Now what happens is you got silicone gaskets and everything else in your engine, so it stands to reason you might get a little bit of a bump up. But it's not bad because the universal average for these oil samples is 17 parts per million. Sodium. Sodium something else is an additive. There's no sodium added, but apparently we have six parts per million of sodium consistently in both used samples, but the universal average is 49 parts per million. Calcium, that's another big one, and I'm really surprised that the uh, Castrol Edge did not have much calcium. The virgin oil sample came out at 643, which is astronomically low, but then again, we go look at the used samples, and we're seeing 1862 and 1957 for the parts per million for the uh, calcium. So apparently they have changed that formulation up a little bit, but the universal average is 1890. So uh, Castrol Edge is right there in the money, maybe a little above that in their formulations. Uh, magnesium, uh, let's see, Castrol Edge, uh, sample came out to 1465 which is astronomically high and uh, not quite sure what's going on there but it is quite high but uh, I think we might have a case of switch numbers here I w I'm not sure what this is going on but uh, either way we had a 183 for the first oil change and then we had a 35 for the second subsequent oil change with the universal average being 211 parts per million. Phosphorus. Phosphorus pretty much equal on the money here. The virgin oil sample had 741 with the first oil change used sample being 692 and then 668 for the last and most recent oil change sample all within reasonable limits of universal averages. Zinc. 851 was what they had at the uh, Castrol Edge with uh, 758 being the first oil change and the last oil change 743. Keep in mind zinc is a usable commodity within the additives and it will decrease over time as it is expended. And then we had no barium in this oil to count on so therefore uh, universal averages are just one. Very rare that you see barium in too many oils. Now our SUS viscosity at 210 degrees Fahrenheit, we look at the virgin oil sample was 54.9 and then the first uh, oil change was 52.7 with the most recent one being at 53. So not much of a change there as far as that goes. Our CST viscosity at 100 degrees Celsius, we're looking at an 875 8.75 with the uh, virgin oil sample, then 810 for the first oil change, along with 819 for the last and most recent oil change. Again, not much variance as far as what we're seeing here. The flash point, originally the oil started out at 425 part, uh, degrees Fahrenheit, and then it went down to 415 on the first oil change, and it dropped even lower to 400 for the second uh, and most recent oil change for the Castrol Edge, but still all within their uh, specs as far as uh, flash points go. Fuel, we had basically no fuel in the oil samples and it was less than 0.5 fuel 
for all the uh, used oil samples pretty consistent across the board. No antifreeze was noted or detected in the oil samples and water was not present in any of the oil samples and we had a trace amount of uh, insolubles in the virgin sample with a 0.2 uh, parts per million of uh, trace solu insolubles in the first oil change with a 0 0.1 in the most recent oil change. Overall, those are good consistent numbers. That means the filtering is working and the engine oil is, of course, doing what it's supposed to do. Now, the cast oil edge, 5W20 synthetic. Uh, basically, it's a blended group two or three oil from what I have determined. And the anti-wear total is 1673 parts per million, which means it's a pretty good oil. It uh, beats out a lot of other ones. Uh, the detergents are 2180 parts per million, which is pretty decent by itself also. But the combined total puts it up there in a good usable oil that I would run to 3,853 parts per million. Now the intervals for use, hey, this stuff's good enough for 100 hours or 3,000 miles. All city high idle work and then a city highway combination drive, you might want to stick around 125 to 150 hours or about 5,000 miles. You can j judge that for yourself. Highway driving, I wouldn't have a problem taking this oil to 10,000 miles or 200 hours uh, going down the road. So. To me, it's a decent oil, it's not too terribly expensive, and it's pretty uh, much available anywhere you want to go to get this oil. So this is the oil testing that I've done on the, and uh, people have supplied me with, rather, uh, for the uh, Castro Edge. And I thank all of their participations in there providing this data for us to determine. Now, just because it was a 3.7 does not mean it won't work in a 3.5 or any other engine that you have. But just keep in mind, frequency is your friend as far as oil changes. But don't overdo it. Get your money's worth out of this. There is no total base number provided for this oil sample. And if you truly want to know what your oil's doing, you will get a total base number test done. And that will tell you, can you bump up the miles and hours on this? I do all my testing on hours because it's more accurate. But that's it, folks. This is Mac T Ford Edge. And I got this oil testing here I wanted to share with you all. And I thank you, everybody, that supplies me with these reports because it does help us determine can we drive this oil further or do we need to shorten it up. And that being said, I also have the band of one that plays great music. Might be at the floor today, and I'm having a great day. And also, don't forget to join up Facebook. Mac T Ford Edge and also Facebook Mac T Garage, Mac T Garage.com website, and also my YouTube channels, Mac T Ford Edge. Like and subscribe, and uh, Mac T Garage on YouTube has all the virgin oil samples on it and everything else that you'd want to see. So go to that, like and subscribe, Mac T Garage on YouTube. And that being said, we got a little bit of bonus footage and some Mercy Girl notes that she will help you lead the way and get you down the road. Thank you for watching Mac T's videos and remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Girl production.